Hey there, I am back with another deck review and today we're going to look at Vivaldi from Passion Playing Cards. Now Passion was an Italian playing card maker. Uh, they have a lot of beautiful decks to their name, most notably for me at least, the Pinocchio decks that they did. Really great design and based on the story of Pinocchio. Uh, but this is one of their most recent decks, the ones that they produced just before finally closing their doors uh, and stopping producing playing cards. Vivaldi, as the name suggests, is inspired by the music of Antonio Vivaldi. Uh, he was an Italian composer who did most of his work back in the 1700s. He's arguably the greatest Baroque composer of all time uh, and has a lot of different concertos. Uh, he was also a violin player himself. Perhaps his most famous one is the Four Seasons, a set of four violin concertos that he put together, and a concerto set that served as part of the inspiration for this deck. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, the deck comes in two different versions. You have Largo and Allegro. These are both uh, musical terms. Largo is Italian for broad, uh, and so it's used when the music's meant to be played very broadly or slowly. And then Allegro is uh, Italian for cheerful, and so much more upbeat and faster pace to the music. Uh, so that's the two different versions of the Vivaldi deck. We'll take a look at both of them, but let's start out with Allegro. Now it's done on this really unique texture. On the face of it, it looks like it's just sort of a soft touch texture in this sea green color. But if you look at the background, you'll see some very slight variation in the texture. These decks, uh, tuck cases were made by Gambler's Warehouse and they wanted to try to capture a feel of velvet. So they used a really unique layering process that gets a unique, just a slightly textured looking coating here that really kind of does give that slight velvet feel to the tuck case. Really interesting process. It's covered with embossing and then silver foiling for all of the details that you see here. Uh, it says Vivaldi there and a really spindly font there in the center. Allegro, the name of this version of the deck, and then lots of scroll work all the way around, really ornate looking, and kind of a matte silver look to that. Not a super shiny silver foil, but I think it really looks nice on this one. Uh, you can see some little musical inspired bits, like the staff that's sort of, or a staff, or maybe they're, you know, strings of a violin that are strung across the top and the bottom, but a really nice feel to it overall. On the sides, you have Vivaldi on one side, and Allegro on the other. On the bottom here, you get your ad copy for Passion Playing Cards. Also mentions the designer, Sofia Bolognesi, uh, and the USPCC who printed the deck. On the top here, it just says Playing Cards, Poker Size. Back gives you a foiled and very lightly embossed version of the back design of the cards. We'll look more at that in a second. And you get the... Uh, silver foil tuck seal here that features the Passion logo. And you can see these are individually numbered out of the 1000 deck edition. So you open up the inner flaps, a few more details. There's a nod to Antonio Vivaldi, who was born in 1678. A couple more Passion logos on the inner, uh, smaller inner flaps there. And nothing printed on the interior of the tuck, but you can see just more of that beautiful sea green color. So there's the tuck case. I really like the texture they uh, they achieved on this one. So Gamblers, I think, did a good job with the top. Let's look at the cards. And here's the back design. So it's done in a really similar uh, sea green color, a little bit paler of a color compared to the tuck box. Uh, and all of the ink here, it looks white, but it's actually a silver metallic ink that forms all of the design here. In the center, you get a violin, uh, kind of mirrored on the other side to form a two-way design, and then lots more of that beautiful scroll work all the way around, all against that sea green background and the thin white poker border around the edge. So it's really nice. I think that silver inks have a tendency to kind of fade in certain lights. Like, see, if I tilt it that way, you can see the card just sort of fading away. But when you hit it in just the right light, they can really stand out nicely. Uh, so there's your back design on the Allegro version of the deck. Uh, into the extra card you get, you get a pair of jokers. And here's our first look at Sofia Bolognese's uh, style that she's gonna use throughout the court cards on this one. It's really beautiful. Has little aspects, almost looks like watercolor. Some, some angles sort of looks cell shaded almost, uh, but feature these two really just vibrant uh, images, both of a composer. 
You see the mask composer there, and he's almost dancing as these ribbons, almost representing the music, are all flowing around him. As you look at the end of the ribbons, some of them have little abstract versions of the pips there, some of them have sheets of music, and you can just really feel the life and the motion in this one. Definitely has a little bit of a muted palette to it overall, those sort of pale yellows and other pale colors in there. And the bottom says Joker, Ma uh, Joker Maestro. Uh, so the two different versions kind of in slightly different poses on the Jokers. You also get a couple of gaff cards. You get a double backer and a blank facer to go with it. All right, now into the meat of the deck. And we'll start with the Power Ace, which for Passion is the Ace of Hearts. You get that sort of elongated uh, red heart pip, very large in the center, and then it's embellished with lots of silver ink. Again, has that same tendency to sort of disappear in some lights, especially against that white background. That I don't like so much, but the design, when you get that just right and you can see those details, really, really nice. Uh, simple, again, little bits of it that are inspired clearly by music, with the music staffs extending off to the side, for example. The bottom, Passione, Italian design playing cards, and then a nice custom pip and index in the corner. So it has that same elongated heart, and then kind of a hand-drawn almost font to the A. The other three aces are much smaller pips in the center, but they're all nicely embellished with that silver metallic ink as well, uh, giving you just some extra little flair. It's kind of understated, but still I like it a lot. I think uh, just a nice little touch to those. As you go through the number cards, they all get sort of a watermarked background, all done in silver metallic ink as well to go with those custom pips uh, against a otherwise fairly standard layout. So smaller pips. Uh, I like in this case that silver ink sort of disappears at times. I like that it's a more subtle, almost watermark-like effect for the number cards. Uh, and so for this one, I think the fact that the silver ink sort of fades away works a little bit better. So the red cards are your classic red uh, black cards, classic black, uh, and those nice little silver hits really just sort of bring everything to life. So a quick look through the clubs and then into the hearts. So that's your number cards. And then we get to the courts and we're going to return to that same style that we saw with the jokers and done with really ornate and fun, vibrant uh, court cards. So as you start with the jacks, you'll see all of them are a, they're carrying bowed instruments in their hands and they're all dressed in blue. So each one of the suits is gonna be after one of the seasons in honor of Vivaldi's Four Seasons Concertos. Uh, and so this one, the blue is representing winter. And I love just the flow of ribbons, the serene look on everybody's face as they play their instruments. It's just a really nice look to it overall. As we go into the yellows, now we go into summer and so they take on just a really bright and completely different feel to them overall. Now, this is interesting. There seem like there's some like artistic liberties taken with how exactly everybody's holding the bows and things like that. Interestingly, there was a lot of criticism about like, hey, nobody would hold a bow like that. But actually, during the Baroque period, they held the bows a little bit differently. They didn't hold them quite on the end the way you'll see uh, players today. They tended to hold them a little bit closer to the center. So... Interesting fun fact that I learned is sort of looking up some of the commentary on this deck early on. Now, as you go to the clubs, now we enter the season of spring, and so greens take over. And then finally, the hearts for fall. And so the reds, of course, as the leaves turn red, all, uh, you know, kind of become the dominant color on these. So definitely autumn feel to these overall. So those are your court cards. I think they're just beautifully illustrated. I like the style a lot. It's got a unique look to it, just a real piece of art on those. Uh, so that is the Allegro version of the deck. Uh, before we talk about handling and uses of the deck, let's take a quick look at the Largo version. So it's the same basic design overall. Obviously it says Largo instead of Allegro, and the color is kind of changed up. Uh, so this one now has the red background with gold foil accented against it. Definitely has a much richer feel to this one overall. Uh, I like the look of the red and gold a little bit better than the, than the I'll call it green and silver. Uh, but both of them, I think, look nice in their own way. The tuck seal now is done in gold, but still numbered to a thousand. It's the same edition size on this one. 
Uh, and as you get into the cards, of course, you're gonna get a back design change on these as well. So as you look at the back design, it's now done in red with gold metallic ink. Definitely to me has a much better and more consistent contrast. That gold against the red definitely stands out. And you'll see some slight design changes on this one. So whereas this one was a violin, this one now has a plucked instrument of some sort, maybe inspired by a lute or something like that uh, in the center. So bowed instruments are gonna be featured on the Allegro version and then plucked instruments are gonna be the feature on the red Largo version. So slight differences to the back design, but definitely similar between the two, nothing too dramatically different. And as we go through the cards themselves, for the most part, they're the same. Obviously, the double backer has a different, uh, different shade to it, and the silver metallics have now been replaced by gold metallics, but the same basic design as we go through this. Again, the gold definitely stands out a little bit better to me. So overall, I like the gold better than the silver. Uh, the other difference on this one is going to come in the court cards. So as you jump over to the court cards, the courts on the face of it are gonna look exactly the same. In fact, all of the musicians that you see here are in the exact same poses that we saw before, but the instruments they have have been switched out a little bit. Uh, and so now, just like we had the back design go from bowed instruments to plucked instruments, now everybody has a plucked instrument, usually a lute on all of these cards. Uh, so you get a little bit of a change up on these. Now, interestingly, none of the hand positions changed. That makes, as you look at some of the cards, I'm not gonna call attention to specific ones, but sometimes the hand position looks a little unnatural for one instrument or the other, just because the artist tried to keep the same hand position and just swap out the instrument on these. So sometimes it looks a little bit less natural, a little bit like they're not really playing the instrument quite right. Uh, but overall, I think it's really about that br you know bright, vibrant artwork more than anything else. So to me, not too much of a distraction. And so that is the Largo, my favorite of the two versions. I'm usually partial to red decks, but in particular on this one, I think just the Largo version uh, did things a little bit better than the Allegro. Now, as far as handling, these are printed by USBCC, has their air cushion finish. They're gonna be familiar feeling deck to any of you guys. They fan really smoothly, uh, cuts really nicely out of the box. Uh, so no complaints on that, just like we come to expect from USBCC. Uh, as far as uses of the deck, I think this would be a great deck to use to liven up gameplay in some way. Even a deck that, while a little bit distracting and highly custom, you could use for magic, handles well enough for cardistry. So to me, this is a deck that I think should be used. Even if it's just to open it up and appreciate it for the artwork, this is one I don't think you should keep in the tuck. Definitely get this one out, use it for something, because I think just the artwork needs to be enjoyed in that way. But anyway, that's it for now. That is the look at Vivaldi from Passione Playing Cards. Great pair of decks. A really big fan of these. I think Passione did a great job with them. But that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe for more deck reviews and unboxings. Let me know what else you want to see. And I'll see you for the next one.